Welcome, listeners. This is the Dream Stream podcast, and I am Yiska Cook here with Ellen Ronis, and we're here to do some dream work together. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So, so I do have a dream, and um, it's really from today. It's this morning. I remembered it. But there's just one part of it that I don't quite remember. So I will, I will tell you when we get there. Okay. I, I'm having a big house party with really cute little kids and really cute pets <laughs> and other people are here and they've driven here and, but the children I'm just going to try to describe this to you because I, I feel I'm losing you. So I'm having a big house party and um, there's, and I'm just remarking that the kids are just cute as can be, you know, everybody's being a good kid, you know, that everybody's sweet. And then really the most beautiful little animals um, are there as well. And let's see. So here's the part that I don't quite remember. Um, it says here, okay, well, this part is not that I don't remember. So this part, so the children go outside and they're playing in the cars. And, and I say to them, children, you know not to go into a stranger's car. And I say it like this, we know we don't go into strangers' cars, right? Because we don't know whose car it is. And then, and then this is where I don't remember. It says, and they'll another agreement and it's all in your ring. It's all in your ring. <laughs> so, but it's, that's not the very end. That's just the fuzzy part. Okay. And then at the end, I'm doing my physical therapy exercises. Um, I, I have my son and his friend had, put like a railing across my long hallway so I could use that for balance. And I, and, and so I, I do, but in my dream, I'm using it. And then I notice that the left side is not like bolted into the wall. And I think, oh, this is about to, you know, excuse me, not work at all anymore. <laughs> you know, this is, this is um, falling apart in my hands. So, hmm that's that's the dream hmm one you, might call it a snippet <laughs> yeah well it sounds like a sounds like a full-on dream okay good um how did you feel when you woke up right i like to find i like to know how you felt in the dream and when you woke up okay so in the dream dream i'm, I'm just delighted there's all these cute little things <laughs> children and pets and I just think it's, it's just so cute. And that's what I keep saying in my dream. And I think I'm kind of in a phase in my life right now where nothing really makes sense anymore. So I just have to find the joy in like cute little animals or like cute children. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that struck me as funny that I kept saying, oh, they're so cute. <laughs> Okay. And um, would, oh, do, would, okay. Would, do you have a title? Would there be a title to this dream? I just, I just called it children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Title's kind of interesting. I, I often, as you know, have trouble with the title. Yeah. Um, yes. But I think that, um, yeah, it, it gives you, it's sort of like an, an immediate. Um, what like would shows I say? you where to hone in where you're honing in, like yeah, where you yourself is, <laughs> is honing in on, you know, at least in the, in the moment, you know, and it could change, but yes. yeah, so children. So yeah, so cute children. And, and what do you make of the part where they're sort of do, I don't know, is, are they misbehaving in the cars or they're just you know, sort of playing? They're music? just playing. They're just innocently playing, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm first of all, slightly, embarrassed I guess because all these kids under my care are like going into the 
guests' cars and <laughs> playing. But um, more than that, I think I'm just wanting to uh, not just teach, but enforce the lesson of you don't go in strangers' cars. You mm -hmm. we and I say in the dream, we both we all know mm -hmm. that you don't go in strangers' and cars. How did that feel to you? What is that like? Does that mean anything to you? Like that that part that sort of maybe a authority you know that sort of yeah uh, you know, um like the teacher i mean you were a teacher right. and of small children these kids yeah. are all that age and younger kindergarten and younger oh, okay. okay um yeah i do I, I i do i feel like this teaching moments all around us and mm -hmm. yeah so and then and then the fuzzy part yeah Anything and, you can that you sense from that, or all right, let me see. Well, I sense that when when I'm telling the kids the reasons we don't go into a car because we don't know whose car it is, we don't get in a car with a stranger, and I was giving all the reasons, and then I don't know what I was trying to say there in the jumble, but I do mm -hmm. use voice to text, so. Uh -huh. I mean, maybe we could figure it out if we read it and then we could think, oh, that sounds like, okay. So I say, we, because we don't know whose car it is and they'll another agreement and it's all in your ring. No, that didn't help at all. <laughs> that didn't help at all. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what yeah. that means. But, um the other thing is i think so i don't think all of the animals are so little because i think either tovi or sammy were in it so tovi was my beloved dog who died of uh you know old age i mean thank god we had him for 13 years mm -hmm. um and and samson is the dog that we, I thought we would adopt, but then he was kind of a handful. So I fostered him until we found him a forever home. So one of them, I think, is in that part of the dream. And that mm -hmm. all happens before I'm doing the physical therapy at the rail, rail in mm -hmm. my hallway. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's all part of the same dream, right? Mm -hmm. You feel like they're connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that, that part struck me. Um, it's like something that's supposed to be stable or yeah. supportive. It's something that's supposed to be supportive to you. Yes. It's kind of shaky, kind of falling yes. apart. Yes, yes. That seems, I don't know, somehow, I don't know what the meaning of that is, but seems yeah. somehow significant. I I always say this is the, this is the, you know, a hardship of being a dream worker is we're working our dreams even as we're dreaming them, you know, uh -huh. trying to figure out what does that mean? And um, <laughs> true. it's true. Yeah. I'm even writing the dreams down in my dream, not, not IRL in real life, but in the dream. Uh -huh. um, but I also was thinking of it as because now the weather is turning and I'm in, you know, new upstate New York and um there's been some snow it's been a nice winter but I haven't been able to go outside in the snow because my walking is not the best and mm -hmm. um but I dreamed that last night and then today I mo much of this no it's just leaves on the porch which also are wet and which also is a slipping hazard you know yeah. Yeah. But um, I was able to go out on the porch. It's a long porch, the length of my house. And I was able to walk it. So I was thinking, well, maybe that's the end of my, like, have to stay indoors exercise. Oh. Like maybe I can. Now right. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Like, where were you going down? I mean, when you're going down the hallway, was there a, was there a goal? The goal the goal was to exercise. Okay. It wasn't about I'm going somewhere down the hall. No, it was about I'm going right here to this, mm -hmm. um, this you know, yeah. railway railing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, mm. yeah, what would that be? Something is not supporting me. Maybe it's just this darn lifestyle. Mm. Mm -hmm. I am not supported in my lifestyle. Mm. I need to get outside more. And I feel like this is... Also, what I wanted to say is 
you know, I usually think of the first sign of spring as like the crocuses or like uh, there's even another bulb flower that opens before them, snowdrops. Snow yeah. Yes. <laughs> or like my first spring robin. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I, those are the signs of spring. But I realized last night when I was in my bed and I listened as a flock of geese flew, you know, in formation right by. And I realized first sign of spring, the birds are migrating back from the south. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're definitely feeling it here too. Yes, yeah, yeah right, yeah. Spring fever. You know, another way that I um, often look, look at dreams as, as you know, um, is this sort of a, I don't even want to say Jungian necessarily approach, but you know, the, the approach where um, more like a gestalt thing where, you know, you are every aspect yes. and person in your dream. Yes. So yes. if that were true, if we were looking at it that way, um, I'm wondering, you know, the little kids, like, is there something, oh. is there some connection to me being oh like a young gosh. person? And maybe, you know, okay, I'm just going to totally riff. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm young and curious and kind I'm of so got so cute. I'm so, so cute. cute. And I'm in, I'm playing in someone's car, like pretending yeah. how it would be to be free, how it would be to be like uh, getting on the road, you know, yeah. like obviously oh, I'm a yes. kid, so I'm just pretending. I know I can't yeah. start the car and uh, I, don't really have, I don't really have a sense that it matters that it's somebody else's car because I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just playing. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, because you're just playing. Right. I mean, any, most any guest would say, oh, it's fine. Not right. any guest. <laughs> Definitely yeah. not. No, I, I probably yeah. wouldn't prefer that myself but you know yeah um, if kids were playing in your car I wouldn't I wouldn't prefer that either so um I'm having issues with my neck so sorry if oh, I'm really? like okay witnessing. yeah if I turn a certain way it's just like oh, oh it feels like my spine is gonna break yeah <laughs> you guys do some weird. yoga yoga oh. neck I don't know exercises. what's happening oh sorry about uh. that yeah, it's okay until I do something and then it's not okay. But um, anyway, so I am thinking of something that's making me think that this dream has a little more day residue than I originally was thinking from uh -huh. something you just said, the, the children. Mm -hmm. um, my friend and our fellow dream worker, Carla, Dr. Carla Mazio, she just got onto this kind of curiosity. Um, um, exploration about who we've been all our lives. So he, she said, well, what was the name that they called you when you were a, a little kid? Or like what name would symbolize you as a little kid? Mm -hmm. And I said, Jesse, you know, mm -hmm. that was me as a little mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. And um, then, and then she wants to know, and as a teenager, and I said, Jess, even though it was never really called Jess, I always was Jessica. Right. Mm -hmm. But I just suggest it sounds like a better name to represent my high school self. Mm -hmm. And then she wanted to know my young adult self. And I used to have neighbors who who have kids and the kids used to call me Jacka because he's a baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and today I'm Yiska. Uh -huh. so, but so the only reason I'm thinking of this is because Carla just emailed this to me probably yesterday it probably uh, preceded this dream uh-huh oh, okay interesting so somehow you were feeling into yourself as a younger person I think somehow. that must have yeah. been yeah yeah that's that's a fun exploration we did that in a writing class once where oh. uh, I'm not sure if it was something we all did no it was something that us came up for me and it was like what if I had a different name yes what if I had a different, you know, people change their names, right? And I always sure. think like, why would, you know, I don't know. It just, yeah, yeah it just strikes me as a kind of a funny thing, but then I was playing with all kinds of things and I was remembering what people called me as a kid. Oh, and what was that? Some people still call me that L, L, oh, oh, L. I love it. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people still call me L's. One of my closest friends calls me L's all the time. Like that, she doesn't ever call me Ellen. Ellen, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's L awesome. L, L, I love it. Yeah. L. Okay. Now that L. was. I like. I like L. 
I like L. That was grammar school or? Oh, growing up, people still call my siblings still call me that. Hey, Al, how's it going? Oh, I, love they still it. Call me that. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. May yeah, I call, call you Al? You sure may. <laughs> I like it actually. It's kind of a fun thing to, you know, because the vibration of a name yes. means something. Yeah. It sort of resonates or it, you know. And, you know, what we think of our names or how we see ourselves as the, that name, you know, and, and if you kind of riff or play with another name, like. Yes. Well, yeah, I remember in middle school, uh, I had the most wonderful Spanish teacher um, from Barcelona mm -hmm. named um, Mrs. Carrasco. And she was just incredible. She always wore like Spanish long skirts and she had so much style lots of makeup she was like dramatic and gorgeous and inspiring so um she was my first spanish one teacher and she gave us all spanish names so uh -huh. and yeah. i just thought that yes. was the best we had spanish ever. names too yeah, yeah my name is elena, elena <laughs> <Spanish lovely>. <laughs> mine yeah, is what was yours josefina oh Wow. Hey, okay. I guess uh, yes. no. you may call me that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would think it would be like Jessica because I, I mean, that is a Spanish name, Jessica. One would thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to just rename you all together. Exactly. Yeah. All right. And I, I didn't mind. I kind of liked yeah. it, you know, a, yeah. a new identity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, yeah and then just a piece about the dogs yeah you know. i was just think about that um did you have did you have a clear sense of you that it was one of your dogs you, you're pretty sure I, that i did yeah it was yeah. either it was a beloved dog to me it, and i've only had like two and a half dogs i've had mm -hmm. lots of cats many many, mm -hmm. many 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 cats but i've um i've had Redwood, she was my first dog from when I was 20. She mm -hmm. lived to be 15. And then when I was about, I don't know, 37, then we got, we adopted Tovey mm -hmm. and he lived until a couple of years ago. And mm -hmm. then I wanted to adopt a, a, like a, not a seeing eye dog, but a service dog. And um, <laughs> sorry about that. For those just listening, the cat just slowly sauntered in front of the camera. And all, all you see is the tail. And the tush. The tail upright, passing through. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> slowly, right? Like, slowly. <laughs> yeah. So um, what was I just talking about? No, talking about the dogs, like sort of the history oh, yeah. of your dogs, and you're yeah. not sure which one it was in the dream, but it was definitely one of your beloved. And then, and then we, so we adopted Samson, thinking I could train him into being my seeing eye dog, but he was so young and so strong and so fast and yeah. jumps high fences to get. He needed more, way mm -hmm. more than I could give him. So I realize that and then I just took it on as a foster situation and I found him the most wonderful family so great yeah. I mean they, they would have different meanings possibly but because I don't know which one of them it is then it must be a common uh, reference point to the dogs what are your dogs like? I mean, obviously you love your dogs and everything, but what, the, what does it mean to you? Like, what does a dog mean to you in a dream? Like I have, I mean, I don't really go by like dream symbology. You know, yes. I say this in air quotes, you know, because they have books on that. Like, oh, if you dream right. about water, right. it means this. I don't really believe that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that we, I mean, I do think that there are general things in dream symbology, but I think that, it matters what it means to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, I kind of like to hear your impression of it first, yeah. and then I'll jump in. So I don't know. I think. Well, I think um, of dogs as a masculine 
energy, even right. if it's a feminine dog. I don't know why. That's just kind of what it seems like to me mm. in a dream, like that dogs, like cats are more feminine and dogs are yes. more masculine. And yes. that's how it feels in my own psyche. Yes. So, um, you know, perhaps like just curious about Maybe. the- My first dog though, Redwood, I got her when I was 20, living in Nederland, Colorado, outside of Boulder. And um, she was just the best and she was a she. So mm -hmm. first dog is Redwood and she's a she, but also, you know, women are called a bitch and that's the name of a female dog. You know? But yeah, I'm not saying, obviously a dog is not a masculine thing. Right. A dog can be a female dog or a man. It's just an animal. It's yes. just, I'm just saying that when if there's a dog in my dream, unless it's a very specific dog and it means something specific to me, it tends to be some part of my masculine site, you know, the animus. Oh, but that's, that's not necessarily true. Sorry, what did you say? That's not necessarily true for right. you. That's just and I'm what just going to say, Al, you said the same thing about horses. And horses, yes, horses also. <laughs> so, so the the feminine, what, what's the feminine? What's left? Birds, okay. birds and fish and cats. <laughs> well, I know. I'm just, I'm just joking with you. I, I get it. You know, because like a masculine energy. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Sammy was a boy. Is a boy. Redwood mm -hmm. was a girl. Tovi was a boy. So. Um, I, I really don't think I genderize them. I mean, other than. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so then maybe it's just something about one of your, you know, beloveds coming, coming to you somehow in that, you know. Oh, I love it. In that mix of very cute beings. Oh, it was a but dream. Was so cute. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe there was, was there, do, do, does it feel like there was a message that they were um, trying to bring you, um, or just being present for, you know, company for your support, maybe the support oh, 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 and, oh, like, from the railing, that, maybe. Yeah. Wow. Good. <laughs> I'm Alan. kind of pulling at straws here. <laughs> but you're pulling at the right straws because I'm getting a lot of, aha, uh -huh, fireworks oh, happening. Oh, good. But, good. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's really true. And I think that there's a part of me that thinks that I'm just uh, making this up, but you mm -hmm. know, uh, part of me wants to think maybe they came inside. And I think this is true to tell me the children were outside playing in a stranger's car. The dogs uh -huh. came back to tell me that. Uh -huh. hmm. Because to me, they symbolize loyalty. Okay. And, you know, I mean, they're just so good. Dogs are so good. Yeah. 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 Especially and, good know, dogs. I do want to say something about the genderizing. Okay. I don't like doing that. Like, I don't like genderizing. That's a funny word, but you know, anything or anybody yes. to be honest. Right. Um, so I think I'm just um, wanting to rethink all of that. Like, yeah. you know, like a, like a, like what if it's a quality? So maybe, you know, there are masculine qualities, right? Yeah, like quality, sure. yeah. you know, um, uh, focus and, yes. you know, forward motion, focus, yes. structure, um, yes. well, you know, but other things. That's not dog. <laughs> that's not necessary. Well, you know, that's a focus. <laughs> <laughs> some dogs are but anyway I, I, just i'm just saying that like like to look at like say a horse or a dog and say yes. well, what are the qualities like loyalty is a exactly. good one you know friendship yeah. loyalty um yeah yes yeah i know it's interesting i kind of would think of like the dangerous animals as women as not women feminine uh -huh. Huh. <laughs> because you know have you ever seen like a lioness mm, protecting, protecting her cubs? Yeah, from, protecting her cubs. Yeah, absolutely. From even her, their father, mm -hmm. you know, the cubs, cubs come first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which wasn't yeah. that obvious to me when I was making bad decisions, you know, in my life. Mm. Mm. I learned a lot from the lioness. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what are you learning from the, from the cute puppies and oh your beloveds or I don't know. 
Yeah. Well, or are you just, you know, yeah, they just there because of what you said, like there's, you know, just being playful, just like entertaining and playful yes. and like, like lighthearted. Yes. Which and many of us aren't so much in waking no, life these days. No, like it's so a lot true. Of yeah. So true. Yeah. Like I, I know I can be annoying because I'm always smiling, but if I wasn't smiling, what are the alternatives? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, no, no <gasps> shit. Yeah. <Sherlock. laughs> yeah. So people, people <clears throat> on in the world are just gonna have to deal with have me to deal smiling. with you smiling. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. <laughs> True. <laughs> I can take a joke. <laughs> can you take a joke? <laughs> Thank you so a... much. What I was just going to say is, I've had a lot of gathering dreams. Mm -hmm. Something I have to work through yeah. in my social life. Yeah, um, but they, the parties aren't usually at my house, and that party was. At oh, this that's house, an at this house that I live in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we didn't even talk um, about that. Like, what was this gathering about and who yeah. else was there other than the little ones, the little think, cute beings? It was so cute. I think mm -hmm. maybe it had something to do with art. And maybe it was like an art exhibition happening in my house. It feels oh, like that. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. also could be from freaking Creative. watching too many Netflix shows. Oh, I know <laughs> what you mean. Really interesting. <laughs> if you go to gallery I know. openings. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. I, I, know. I know there's day residue in this dream and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right now. It could be interesting, you know. Finally, it's getting spring. Yeah, yeah. A lot like spring time <laughs> i'm so happy spring time for hitler in in Germany. Germany. <laughs> Boy, that was my father's that, <laughs> my, that was my father's favorite movie the it was a good one it was my really father good. just loved it and he also liked mrs robinson with dustin uh -huh. yeah what was that yeah. called graduate the graduate my yeah. dad's favorite movies were the producers and the graduate the producers was just so classic it was so good so funny it's so yeah. funny so funny yeah and what gene wilder is in it yeah yeah i think he's, so yeah he's just crazy in it. Gene wilder or is it i think so forget now yeah and so and then it was a modern version of it with um uh, can't remember what's his name matthew broderick and oh somebody else oh really in a more modern version i might have been actually on broadway i don't remember now i'm not talking to you ellen and not talking to you listeners i'm talking to my phone and what are you saying in your phone who starred in the modern the, version of producers the original producers right isn't that what we're looking for? i was looking at the modern version all right well Oops. <laughs> okay. 1967. That's cool. And um the producers is a 1967 American satirical black comedy film written and directed by Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. His directorial yeah. debut and mm -hmm. starring oh yeah, Zero Mostel. You're a mustel. And, he was the one who played Fiddler on the Roof. And yeah, and Gene Wilder. Okay. Dick Sean and Kenneth Myers. And who, who knows who these people are? Yeah. But uh, it's a great movie. We'll it's, it's a great movie. Tonight. I know. It's a good one. And then I can dream about oh, a flop of a Broadway show. <laughs> <laughs> My day residue. Yes. Um, so, how's your yeah. dream life? Um. I've been having a really weird time with dreaming and sleeping where um, I'm like, I will fall asleep. And then like a half hour later, I wake up and it's like, I'm, I've had this dream, this really like wild or vivid dream. Okay. And, and it's only been like a half hour since I've been sleeping. And I'm like, 
I'm not even sure if I actually fell asleep. Yeah. And it would keep happening. I had that two days in a row. Like I didn't know if I was actually sleeping or if I was in some kind of a weird, like hypnagogic. There's a way, there's a way there's, you know, Stephen Larson, uh, dream teacher and um, neurofeedback person, mm -hmm. psychologist. He um, talks about the brain waves and how we can see where the REM sleeps come. And there's a whole cycle of our sleeping. So, mm -hmm. so shallow into a sleep, right? The first five minutes, right. is that so shallow into a sleep. And I don't know the different brain waves. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to be able to tell you that. But um, I would think that was probably one of your, you did yeah. you know that later in the night, your dreams get longer. Oh, did, did you not. know that? No. Oh, fascinating. That's so that. cool. I wonder yeah. why. Maybe because you're you're deeper in sleep. Deeper in sleep, probably. Yeah. And not, and then your subconscious is like, all right, I got her. I'm here. Right. I I'm, can work on her I now. Have, <laughs> I have landed. <laughs> That's funny. That's really, really cool. I did That's not know cool that. Thing. Yeah. But let's let's do an experiment. Yeah. Okay. Viewers, join us in this experiment. <laughs> so how are we going to do this? I mean. Oh God! I don't know. I could set. Oh, I did that. I could set alarms. You know, I could set if I, I go to sleep around eleven. I could set an alarm for midnight and then another one at like four in the morning. I, I don't want to do it because I don't sleep that well, so I don't want oh, to wake yeah. myself up. <laughs> I, I, I can do it. I'm the one for the job. Yeah, then I can fall job. back asleep for yeah. yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely feeling like I I probably wasn't really falling into deep sleep, but I was falling enough to have a dream, yes. and then it, something would wake me up, and then but and I and I re remember thinking, wow, this is just oh so much, so full, so many images. Of course, I don't remember a single thing because I didn't get up to write it down because I just wanted to go, kept going back. To okay, sleep. yeah, because you don't want to lose any sleep. Yeah, but I do remember one image that was a, it was a gray okay. kitten. It was a gray kitten and somebody was either giving it to me or I was giving it to, I think I was giving it to my friend Dara. And then I had another dream with her in it, but that was very much processing something. I had sent her oh, okay. in the dream, in waking life, I okay. sent her um, some, a gift. I sent her okay. some pottery and a book nice. and um, I forgot to put her card in, in oh. it, you know, so it's just, the stuff without any message yes. <laughs> so in the dream I, uh, she was really mad at she was really upset with me because she had gotten the package and she was really upset with me oh no she uh you know that there was no message there was just she's like it's just what is it it's just stuff like there's no message there's no love you know and she was really <laughs> how, how she was reacting in the dream not hmm? in you no know, this is a dream this is okay. not, she hasn't, gotten, she hasn't gotten it yet. <laughs> so yeah. I'm thinking no one can be that ungrateful. Yeah, no, I, she would not be that ungrateful. I, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Definitely not. But I'm this sorry, I'm not looking at, her. at you. I was just looking at my phone. Um, I'm just trying to, I want to back up what I just said to you. Because of course now I'm doubting myself. Okay. So, oh, wait a second. Okay. Dreams may last longer when you have already been asleep for a few hours. Well, that's exactly what I'm wanting. That's so, so cool. It's, really it's cool. I think you figured out why. It's getting the deeper into, into sleep. So yeah. then I wonder, like, when is the best time for lucid dreaming? Probably oh. when we're lightly asleep. And I would so think we can, so. We can have enough uh, consciousness, right? Consciousness you, still, to, you have enough, yeah. To drive this train. Yeah, yeah. your brain waves are wherever they are doing, not, not sinking deep in. Yes. And when would you think you'd have like prophetic dreams? I think that would probably be in the deep sleep. I don't know. I don't and know. You really, you know, you really. Yeah, know. I guess when you're super, super relaxed, when you're able to yeah. kind of channel yeah. in something. Yes. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, for me, the times I remember the dreams most are in the morning. Right? That's probably typical yes. too, right? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. for, because it's hard to wake up from a yeah. dream in the yeah. night. Yeah, a lot of times you know, if I get up to go to the bathroom or something, yes. I'll, re I'll be in the middle of a dream and I'll remember a dream. Oh, that's, uh -huh. exactly. see, that's, that's good with me. I mean, I talk about this all the time, but because THC is one of my medicines um, and I've blamed me not always having full recall of the dreams on the marijuana, but I think that I, you know, I really can't blame that because how can something that I need for my medicine, mm -hmm. you know, and that I really like mm -hmm. taking this medicine, how can this take away dreams when dreams are the most fascinating part of life for me, usually? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's, it's going to be me overcoming this mm -hmm. uh, forgetfulness. Mm. Yeah, maybe just really paying more attention, like, like really doing all the things that we tell people, <laughs> putting like the, you know, the pad by the bed, you know, yeah. the pen. I know yeah. writing is not so easy for you, but your phone. Well, I just, I record it. That's why we had the mystery piece it, of yeah. the dream, because I couldn't so out I what do I that. said. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So good okay. to talk with you, Ellen. Yeah, you too. And, you too. Yes. And so are you good? I mean, you told me how your friend yeah. reacted. Okay. How how can yeah, you I didn't remedy feel that? like it was I just felt like it was like I needed to I needed to let her know that she was gonna get a package that didn't have a card in it. Okay. And I texted her <laughs> feel like it was it was a little questionable that she was so, you know, upset with me about it. Yeah. Um, was dream. But, is there a part of myself that was upset with myself? For I think I was definitely feeling like, yeah, like I wasn't, um, I wasn't like on it. I wasn't on it. You know, I was like, yes. so I was distracted. I've been feeling anxious lately. Yes. And I'm just like doing to a lot and I'm kind of doing things, trying to do the right thing with everything yes. I'm doing and not um, necessarily doing anything really well or really like heartfully Okay. because I'm a little on the surface, you know, kind yes. of moving through life very quickly. So I think yes. that there was, there was, you know, something in the message was really more for me, probably, I think you know, so, like, right. yeah, exactly. Like, send a gift from your heart, make it heartful, make it special. Don't like just yes. half-assedly. You know, okay, good. Box. <laughs> I don't think your inner voice is well, no, I can't say this. I don't think that your higher voice is criticizing you, but I think your inner voice is hard on you. Yeah, I think probably. We've and I've been really looking, yeah, I've been looking a very a lot, very a lot. I've been looking pretty <laughs> deeply in on that, you know, the this the self judge the judge judgmental voices and yes. who are they and where do they come from? Yes. And how can I just, you know, invite them to the table, you know, invite those yes. those voices, the parts of, of myself, the parts of ourselves that we don't like or think are not good enough or that we really are, you know, criticize or hate or whatever. And just say, like, we cannot hate any part of ourselves. No, I can't. feel like I'll say that for myself. I can no longer do that. It's yeah. just not acceptable. So, yeah. I mean, I don't get it. Good. Yeah. I, I've always really liked you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so hard on yourself? I like me too, but like, you know, whatever, that little perfectionist or, or yeah. whoever it is inside me that just somehow doesn't always see myself as is, yeah. you know, clearly. Sure. Um, you know, and is always, yeah, just so, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole thing. Yeah. I mean, I also can get really down on myself too. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's you human know, nature. I, we all have something, yeah. you know. Oh, oh yeah. it's getting, it's getting, it's really not dark out, but it's, it's getting so cool. dark in it's your a, room. I look like a ghost, like a floating head. You do. And, and you see the dark night outside my window. I've been seeing um, cars go by, car light, traffic. Yeah. Light. So it's seven o'clock. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually, um, it's actually still light out. Oh yeah. So it is. So I don't know why it's so dark in here, but anyway, it is. So Ellen, can you stay on after I stop the podcast sure okay well to our listeners we always enjoy doing this podcast knowing that you will be listening and hopefully enjoying as well and so we say 
Sweet Dreams, Holomode Metukin. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.